Hello everybody and welcome back to the Computer Science of Dentistry channel. If you are watching this video in chronological order of when I've released things, um, then this is the second video in a series that I'm making. Uh, the first video is entitled D3 Lab X64 Preview. And in that video, I basically just show um, the end results of all the tools in D3 Lab doesn't really show how the tools work or anything like that. Kind of just shows off the, the end results. Um, in these videos, in these next several videos, um, I'll be showing a brief walkthrough of how I got to that point. Um, each tool individually um, and all the different functions and features within D3 Lab uh, as it stands right now. So um, let's go ahead and just get started. Okay, so what I mentioned in the first video is that um, you can generate all those um, end products with just these two input scans. Um, so generally speaking, where you want to start is basing a model. So we'll start with the model building tool here, and there's a couple new options um, that you can see right there, but I didn't go over them in this video. I will at a later date, um, but uh, it basically... Uh, just allows you to do all the model building steps without any input whatsoever. Um, and it just assumes that you have everything lined up properly and um, everything selected properly. So um, sometimes that's the case. You know, sometimes you just get really good scans and you don't need to do these steps of selecting and removing um, the extra. Um, and it's just nice just to hit that button, just get a get a model. Um, doesn't work all the time if you don't have a good um, input selection. You know, it's not trimmed well. There's some weird um, flares like on this model right there. Um, I'm not sure if it would work properly. So anyway, that's that's what that does on um, on the uh, uh, feeling lucky tool there. And what it uses for input parameters as far as uh, what it's going to be based off of. Um, it's the last tool or it's the last settings that you used when you did the manual model building. So whatever you did there, the hollow, um, whatever the thickness was, whatever the height was, it'll just save and use those parameters um, from the last one. So if you want to change that, um, you just do another um, manual model build with new parameters. And then the next time you do feeling lucky, it will um, use those. So um, anyway, that was that. And uh, basically at this point, I've just selected um, the main part of the model um, that I want to use um, in order to 3D print, which is almost everything except those weird little flares off to the side. Um, and I have many other videos showing how to, to really um, go through difficult models and, and to base them properly. Um, and this one's not too bad. Um, there is this little area where the frenum was that I think might give me problems. So I'm just selecting that, hitting delete. Um, maybe didn't have to do that, but just decided to anyway, just to be safe. Um, the reason I did it from the inside out is because I would get worried that by selecting that, it would select everything on the palette as well behind it, because it kind of just selects everything um, in, that, in that little red selection that you have. So I did it from the inside out just to make sure I did the exterior portion there. So um, once I felt like I had everything looking pretty decent on the outside of that um, edge of the model, just hit next and it goes through the first several steps here, uh, which is just kind of making that boundary just a little bit easier to um, extrude to, to base the model. And um, couple different things with the model building tool. I took out several of the steps so um, you don't have to hit next so many times. It will just do like filling the holes and some other things just automatically. Um, but this step, you can see that the hollow model option is ready to go in case you do not want to um, hollow your model, which is the case sometimes. You now have that availability and will work just fine. Um, wall thickness, like usual, if you're hollowing, same thing with base height. Um, and then you hit next. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's it. I think um, you just sit here and wait, and we'll, uh, it will be the base model at the end. So at first, it does like an over-extrusion, um, especially in, in this case, we didn't choose hollow model. But um, if you were to hollow it, it would need to extrude whatever distance you did plus um, the thickness just to make sure that it did the cuts right. So that's just showing that there is that, um, that one millimeter that we had. 
as far as the base height, even though it looks way more from the front here, um, it just goes from the lowest part there. So it was actually one millimeter, even though it looks way more than that. Um, a common problem with this tool though, is once you're done, it's, it's out of alignment, you know, it, um, which is fine if you're just 3D printing things and you can hand occlude it, it's just fine. Um, but you sometimes may need to take this base model and get it back into its regular occlusion to do other things. Um, many, many other things, uh, whether you're uh, now going to import that into a, a virtual articulator or set up some sort of connectors on the top and bottom arch. So then um, when you 3D print them, they snap together just like any traditional lab would do. Um, those things are, are only possible if you get it back into its normal occlusion. You can hand do it, but um, that's not accurate. You know, it's not as accurate as you need. So this is a, a new feature. It's called a line. It's generic. It can be used with any input meshes. It works well with dental meshes. Um, the first thing it says to do is just have the two objects present and then select the one that you want to align to, then hit go. Then you'll select the model that you want to do the aligning and you hit next. And then from there, um, you need to kind of get it as close as you can to the original model uh, just to help things out a little bit. You hit next and uh, it goes through a series of uh, alignments and I probably overdid it to be quite honest. Um, it does two rounds of it. Uh, the first round is, is 50 um, different iterations, which is kind of a lot anyways. Um, but I just really wanted to make sure that this was as accurate as possible because you want the occlusion, you know, as accurate as it can be for, for many other tools down the road here. So I just wanted to be as safe as possible. Um, so the first thing it does is uh, a round of, of 50 iterations. Uh, and that just kind of gets it in my mind as close as possible, even though it's probably fine right now. Then it does another hundred iterations uh, just to absolutely make sure it's in the right place. Um, even though, again, I feel like it's already in the right place, but just to make sure. Um, and you could argue that, you know, this is redundant, not necessary, but at the same time, just for a tiny bit more of a wait to ensure the accuracy, I don't know. I feel like it's a, a good call. So it, that's why it's in there. Um, and that's what it's doing right now. It's doing that second round of iterations, a uh, hundred. And then after this finishes, uh, everything should be aligned back to where it started. So if you bring up the uh, original scan or the opposing scan, you can see it's back where it was originally with the base. If you pull up both the scan uh, and the base model, you can see that weird kind of overlapping camouflage look. That's a, a sign that things are or right on top of each other. So that's that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, it's a good feature to have. So um, that's now included. Um, you definitely do not have to do that if you're just going to be 3D printing these for, um, you know, doing a lot uh, aligners or uh, or things like that. But um, but if you're going to be needing this in occlusion for other things down the road, this is good.